I'm Pradeep Rahanji from the University of uh, Wisconsin, Milwaukee. And it's a great pleasure to reconnect with the Indian Institute of Foundrymen. I had given my first talk to the Indian Institute of Foundrymen in 1968-69, 50 years ago. My co-authors are, are David Weiss of Ek Industries, Ajay Kumar, University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, TDP Rajan from NIST in Trivandrum, BC Pai from NIST in Trivandrum, and DP Mondal and S. Das uh, from Empri in Bhopal, Bhopal, India. Uh, this is the 50th anniversary of the start of the work in cast metal matrix composites in 1968-69, both in US and in India. In India, this work started in 1968 when I was serving as a visiting professor at the uh, institute. And you will see that this work has grown uh, into a full-fledged full fledged field, uh, both in India and, and abroad. Uh, India has developed a leading position in research in the area of cast metal matrix composites and I hope the foundries uh, in, in India will become the major manufacturer of these cast metal composites and the engineering industry here will, will begin to use these composites to reduce energy consumption and to reduce the emissions and pollution. Uh, I would, in this lecture, uh, I will uh, I will cover uh, the the uh, the different microstructures that can be produced in cast metal matrix composites. The different processing methods. Why do we use metal matrix composites compared to monolithic materials? The components of metal matrix composites currently in use world over, and I'll briefly talk about the development of metal matrix composites in India particularly prototype developments in Empri CSR lab in Bhopal and NIST in Trivandrum and, and at my, my university where I'm currently here. I'll also talk about global market and recent trends of metal matrix composites both in US and India, cover a little bit about research in printed in this field and, and then, then talk about the conclusions. Uh, composite materials are mixtures of two phases. Uh, it could be fibers of one phase, long fibers or short fibers or particles of a second phase dispersed in a continuous matrix of one phase. These particles could be micro size, nano size, they could be rounded and they could be solid or hollow. As I will show you in my talk, many different kinds of particles have been introduced in cast metal matrix composites. The foundry industries have been producing cast metal matrix composites for, the long, for a very long time and examples here are this aluminum silicon eutectic. Silicon needles disperse in the matrix of aluminum and ductile iron which is graphite nodules dispersed in the matrix of iron. Both of these are extensively used in the automotive industry and many of you who have driven today to the conference probably have components both of aluminum silicon alloys and ductile iron in the cars that you drove uh, to this meeting. Uh, the, the methods by which you can mix the reinforcement and the matrix can be three types. One is that you can use diffusion bonding where you put layers of one, one phase and in the middle you put fibers, you press them and consolidate them by diffusion bonding. The other is by pyrometallurgy. You take a mixture of metal powder and ceramic particle powder, press them and that produces a metal matrix composites. The third method, which is the foundry paste method, is where you melt liquid metal and add the particulates or even fibers to that and allow the liquid to solidify to produce metal matrix composites. Why I have been working with foundry techniques? Because this is the lowest cost method to produce metal matrix composites. The foundry techniques that have been used, that have been used to, move, uh, to produce metal matrix composite castings involve stir mixing, followed by sand castings or permanent mold castings, investment castings, metal matrix composite castings have been made by high pressure die casting, low pressure die casting, centrifugal casting, infiltration of preforms or loose powdered beds by liquid metal, and pultrusion of fiber troughs 
through the uh, through the method that I will show you a little later. This slide shows the kind of microstructures that can be produced in cast metal matrix composites. In the aluminum silicon alloy and ductile iron alloys, the ratio of the reinforcement to the phases or the matrix phase are restricted by phase diagrams and thermodynamics, where you are limited in the kind of composites you can make. In the composites that I will talk today, we add particles or fibers from outside into the bed, so there is really no limitation of the different kinds of microstructures I can produce. The only limitation is our limitation in mixing the particles in the melt and our ability to pour them into molds in foundries. So here are a few examples of different microstructures that have been produced. These are saffron fibers embedded in aluminum matrix and this composite has been used in diesel engine pistons by Toyota as far back as 1980s. This is silicon carbide particles embedded in white aluminum and this is used as heat sinks in every laptop, laptop perhaps used in the world today. This is a picture of graphite particles dispersed in the matrix of uh, aluminum and a lot of this work was done in India as well as in US and these have been tried for pistons and cylinder liners and bearings for automotive applications. This microstructure is spherical alumina dispersed in the matrix of aluminum alloys. Uh, this microstructure is 20 volume percentage, this dark silicon carbide particles embedded in the matrix of aluminum alloy. This material has been used for brake rotors in many cars that I will show you a little later. An example of centrifugal casting. In this case, I have centrifugally cast a suspension of graphite particles and aluminum to produce functionally gradient, selectively reinforced cylinder where only the inside has got graphite whereas the outside is free from graphite. This is ideal for a cylinder liner or bearing application because you only have the solid lubricant where you need it. It's a very low cost single step centrifugal casting process that can be practiced in India in any of the foundries. Schematically what you do uh, in stir mixing, you produce a melt like you do in any foundry and you use a stirrer to mix particles or short fibers in the melt and then you pour this suspension in a mold to produce a casting. Here is an example of our industry partners where they are melting 400 pounds of aluminum and this is the mixer and they will add particles to create a metal matrix composite melt which can be poured into the casting. The other method of producing high volume percentage reinforced metal matrix composites is where you put a loose bed or a preform of ceramic particles and then infiltrate it with liquid metal from below or from the top. From the below it is very much like low pressure die casting. The liquid metal infiltrates the spaces between the particles and it solidifies to produce metal matrix composite castings. Uh, here is an example of a 400 pound melt of aluminum silicon carbide composite. This is the melt which has got silicon carbide particles and aluminum silicon melt. It is being cast into large brake, large brake rotors for trains in Germany. To give an example that these composite alloys can be poured like any normal, uh, no, normal casting that you produce. Why are we talking about our metal matrix composites? Why are we interested in it? And the reasons are that it allows us to make parts that are much lighter. Here is an example of plot of specific modulus versus specific strength. And metal matrix composites has got much higher combination of specific modulus and specific strength compared to monolithic alloys that you cast in foundries like aluminum. And that is why the higher the combination of specific modulus and specific strength, the lighter can be the part for same stress application. This is why our transportation systems, cars, trucks, bicycles, motorcycles, scooters and trains can be made much lighter if they have metal matrix composite components. And this is a plot similar specific strength and specific young modulus showing that monolithic aluminum alloys are here, the composites are here and if you instead of aluminum use magnesium as a matrix you move along this line that means parts can be made lighter and lighter. The another 
unique capability of metal composites is their specific thermal conductivity that is thermal conductivity divided by weight is much higher than the currently used inverse for heat, heat sink applications in computers. The currently used materials have got for a given coefficient of thermal expansion thermal conductivity is here but when you use composites the thermal conductivity is much higher and that is the reason in every laptop the heat sinks are of metal matrix composites. These are some other plots that show why metal matrix composites have an advantage over monolithic material. Uh, this slide just shows applications of discontinuously reinforced metal matrix composites in space applications, Hubble telescopes, uh, commercial satellites, in automotive applications, and I will show you some pictures a little later, drive shafts, wires, engine block cylinder liner, brake rotors, and applications have been in Chevy, Toyota, Honda Prelude, Prima Plural, and many other cars in aero propulsion as fan exit main guides in track and wet engines, as ventral fins in aero structures, in F-16 planes, thermal management, in power semiconductors in Motorola power chips, and even for recreation, for golf clubs, bicycle frames and brake fins, they have, they have used aluminum silicon carbide because it allows you to improve the performance. Uh, this is a very busy slide. Uh, that, that was put together by my co-authors. It shows the manufacturers of different metal matrix composites including Toyota, Honda, General Motors, uh, Mazda and so on. And this shows the components uh, that have been produced and these include pistons, cylinder liners, uh, uh, brake rotors, engine cradles, uh, drive shafts and so on. So you can read it a large number and some applications are of course uh, heat sinks for computers, current collectors of aluminum and copper graphite. So this shows the range of parts from 1968-69 the field has grown. A large number of parts have been made by a variety of manufacturers all, all over India uh, and, and they have been used. This shows the picture of the applications in aerospace applications, discontinuous and can continuous metal matrix composites on F-16 aircraft, a discontinuously reinforced composite or aluminum, it replaced graphite epoxy in Pratt and Whitney engines. This is aluminum graphite antenna used in Hubble telescope. In shuttle orbiters, these ribs were made out of metal composites and the use of metal composites in, in helicopters. So they are no longer a curiosity in the research lab. They have been manufactured and used in critical applications like aerospace. These are pictures of some components used for automotive applications. This is a Honda Prelude cylinder block and you can see the fibers reinforcing the aluminum and this allowed the cylinder block to be much smaller and lighter and lasted much more. These are pictures of various brake rotors in different cars including Chrysler Prouder of, made out of aluminum silicon carbide. This is a drive shaft used in Corvette uh, and Crown Victoria cars. This is the, uh, uh, the train, the German train, in which the brake rotor is aluminum silicon carbide. So you can see there have been tremendous progress in actual use of metal matrix composites for automotive applications. These are some other pictures. Uh, this is in RAV4 Toyota. The disc brake rotor was an aluminum composite. The heat sink here, in, in Prius is actually an aluminum silicon carbide composite here. This is the cylinder block that I mentioned in Toyota LTZ engines where the MMC preform is here and the cylinder liner is actually a metal matrix composite. The crankshaft pulley uh, is again a metal matrix composite. These are some compressors, lightweight compressors instead of gas iron. They are made out of aluminum with an MMC liner. This is an investment casting of metal matrix composites from O'Fallon Company in Minnesota. So basically my message is, uh, starting from 1968-69, there has been a tremendously growing use of metal matrix composites in transportation applications and heat sinks, in recreation applications and so on. This is just a list of metal matrix composites being developed at our university for, at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee for 
other applications, automotive and other, for wear resistance, for bearing surfaces, cylinder liners, pistons, crankshafts, trappets, brake components. These are aluminum silicon carbide, aluminum alumina, and aluminum graphite. Ultra light uh, composites for energy absorption. For crumple zones, frame members, reinforced pedestrian impact zones, and for batteries, where hollow particles are reinforcing the metals. And then self cleaning materials, metal matrix composites with hydrophobic reinforcements for water pumps, water jackets, exposed metallic components, self lubricating metal matrix composites, castings incorporating graphite, moly disulfide, titanium dimoride for bearings, journals, cylinder liners, pistons, and gear surfaces. For self cleaning metal castings that can heal themselves, these are castings reinforced with shape memory alloys or hollow melting helium agents encapsulated in hollow balloons. These are going to be used for difficult to access fatigue prone critical components as drive shafts, wheels, steering knuckles and columns and connecting rods, materials with high thermal conductivity. Uh, metals reinforced with carbon, diamond or cubic boron nitride powder for cylinder liners, for water passages, brake components, supercharger components, catalytic converters and electric electronics packaging. Ultra high strength lightweight materials, micro and nano composites reinforced with silicon carbide or alumina, carbon nanotubes, carbon or next steel fibers and graphene for connecting rod, brake calipers, brake, brake rotors. And then the, the metal matrix composite technology also would allow us to produce very low cost materials. We can fill the metals with fly ash or waste sand from foundries as fillers and this allows us to make castings that are cheaper than monolithic materials and these are for low stress applications like intake manifolds, accessory brackets, low load brackets, oil pans, valve covers, alternator covers and valve water pumps and I will show you a few pictures uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, these are pictures of aluminum graphite piston that was tested in a 5 horsepower diesel engine at the Indian Institute of Science when I was there. And this is a composite aluminum silicon aluminum graphite liner. This was successfully run in an Alfa Romeo racing car engine. And this is a connecting rod bearing of aluminum graphite successfully used as a small end of a connecting rod in a small engine. And this is an aluminum graphite liner cast in place for a small non mover engine application and successfully tested. This is a centrifugally cast aluminum graphite liner which was tested in a diesel engine at the Indian Institute of Science Bangalore when I was here. I have been talking mainly about aluminum matrix but there are opportunities in copper matrix composites and here is an example of lead free copper graphite composite casting for plumbing fixtures. As you know lead is being banned in plumbing fixtures because it has deleterious effect on brains. So at, at our university we have developed copper graphite where instead of lead we have substituted lead by graphite and poured that suspension into a variety of plumbing components and in centri by centrifugal casting we have concentrated all the graphite so it can be used as lead free plumbing fixtures and lead free bearings. I believe there is a great opportunity to manufacture these in India both for internal combustion uh, internal consumption where lead is being banned and also for export to countries where lead has already been uh, been banned. I did talk about low cost fly ash filled metal matrix composite casting and here is an example the fly ash particles dispersed in the matrix of cast aluminum and Indian fly ash is F fly ash which is more suitable than C fly ash for dispersion in aluminum castings and incorporating fly ash in aluminum makes it cheaper, it makes it lower in density, lower weight and it increases the wear resistance and decreases the coefficient of expansion. And here are a number of castings made in aluminum fly ash including intake, intake valves, uh, including a magnesium fly ash casting and an oil pan cover for small engines. So these things have been used and I believe they can be manufactured. 2% of all the waste flyers, India produces about 80 million tons 
of fly ash which is wasted each year, only a small fraction is used for construction purposes. 2% of this fly ash is perfect holospheres which we call xenospheres. So this is a typical xenosphere and by simple infiltration technique I can produce a 65% volume percentage hollow xenospheres of fly ash embedded in alumina. That is the picture. So this is a synthetic foam casting and the energy absorption per unit weight of this casting is much more than solid aluminum or aluminum foams that are currently being used. So there is a great opportunity to manufacture uh, these castings for both civilian and defense applications. The aluminum fly ash uh, xenosphere uh, syntactic foam that can be encapsulated in hollow steel frames for transportation applications. So instead of using a solid steel which is much more heavier, I could use aluminum fly ash reinforced hollow steel frame to reduce the weight of the cars. Uh, you know, lead batteries are used in India a great deal and they are very heavy. So what we have tried to do is incorporate hollow fly ash xenospheres in lead to reduce the density of lead used in batteries to half. Of course, a lot more work has to be done to optimize this to make sure it functions properly in a lead acid battery, but the opportunity still exists. Uh, another set of composite cast composites that can be made in foundries were developed in our lab where we have put silicon carbide and graphite, two different kinds of reinforcements in the same liquid metal bed. And this has an advantage because it prevents the flotation of graphite and settling of silicon carbide and it combines high stiffness due to silicon carbide and solid lubricating ability because of the graphite. And these are the different castings that have been made in hybrid composites. And these hybrid composites are now being explored for cylinder liner applications here. And this table is pretty busy, but it shows that aluminum, silicon carbide, graphite composite has advantage in properties over the ductile iron and aluminum silicon alloys that are currently used in cylinder liners. So these aluminum silicon carbide graphite cylinder liners made, manufactured by intelligent composites have been shown to reduce fuel consumption and emissions in small stationary engines, motorcycle engines, watercraft engines and rotary engines and automobile industry is now interested in using these cylinder liners instead of cast iron cylinder liners. I did talk about the ability of castings to repair any cracks that are in them and that is called self-healing castings and shape recovery castings. If your car has been hit and it has a dent, can it repair itself and retain the original shape? The principle behind this that you incorporate fibers of shape memory alloy which remembers its shape in a cast aluminum alloy and when you pull this beyond the strength of aluminum, aluminum fractures and the surfaces are separated but if you heat it the shape memory alloy shrinks and it can bring the close the crack and heal it. Here is an example in a tensile bar you see a crack and after heating the crack has disappeared and you see the same thing that aluminum shape memory alloy material that was bent by simply heating it straightens itself and recovers its shape. This is a little bit farther out not ready for immediate application but I'd like Indian foundries to be thinking about these self-repairing casting applications. I will, I, I, some of my co-authors were nice enough to send me some prototype development work done in India. Many institutions have made prototypes in India, but I'll talk about CSR where I, I served as the founder director of the NIST in Trivandrum and Ampli in Bhopal. So they have sent me pictures here of aluminum 356 15% silicon carbide metal matrix composites first year housing and piston rings. So Indian labs have not only published papers, they have produced prototypes and now it is up to the foundries and industries in India to start manufacturing the know-how to produce these prototypes already exist in India. Uh, this is functionally gradient aluminum matrix composite prototype components, cylinder liner and, and gears in this picture brake rotor and this and this is piston for engineering application so already the technology of making these prototypes exists in India and it is for the industry to produce. 
These are prototypes of cast metal matrix composites developed at Empri in CSIR India and this is LM13 10% silicon carbide composite nose cone which has got a very high damping capacity and higher strength. These are pressure die cast aluminum silicon carbide composite brake drums inner and outer view. They lead to 66% weight reduction in comparison to cast iron brake drums. I was looking at, uh, uh, as I mentioned, that India has published a lot more papers that I will show you in a few minutes. And it has now developed prototypes, but the actual use in India is very limited. Interestingly, one of the uses of current users of metal matrix composites is by Tata Electric. They are trying the conductor wires, which are next and fiber reinforced aluminum developed by 3M, and they make the conductor wires or power lines much lighter. So as far as I know, this is a, a use of metal matrix composites, continuous fiber composites in India currently tried out. But as I said, the bigger opportunities are in transportation structure, uh, transportation structure, uh, uh, transportation area in automobiles, trucks, cars, trains, and, and so on. Uh, I would like to draw your attention that there was a report by Global Strategic Business Report global industry analysts and interestingly enough they concluded that India holds a leading position in research in cast metal matrix composites and I hope that the foundry industry uh, in, in India tries to become the manufacturer and goes beyond the stage of research and this report concludes that transportation sector will be the major beneficiary due to the manufacture of metal matrix composites in the region and they, 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 they in fact, identified Indian railways as the first opportunity for using metal matrix composites and demand from, for these advanced materials would lead to the requirement of manufacturing technology and know-how for metal matrix composite for uses in other sections. They pointed out that national agencies would play a vital role for this purpose with their contribution in material selection, design, process technology. And this, this, these writers conclude that the presence of qualified human resources, that means the researchers and people who have done research in metal composites in India will facilitate the development of cast metal matrix composites industry in India. It's up to you guys to produce. These are some plots that one of my co-authors uh, collected. I hope they are correct in the number of publications, how they have grown number of publications from India how they have grown from 1996 to 2018. So there is a continuous growth of research and the time has come now that this research leads to manufacture and use of these composites casting. The organization in India who have done research in cast composites including includes DRDO, Indian Institute of Science, NITs, CSIR and the different IITs and there are many other places which we have not been able to show. So there is a large cross-section of Indian organizations that have worked or done research in cast composites and have the, have the uh, know-how. This is a plot, uh, uh, the count of papers published by India compared to other countries including Germany, USA and India still publishes more papers in cast metal matrix composites but now the, the, the imperative is to get into the manufacture. The market just in transportation section. This is a slide collect sent to me by Empri Bhopal. A large number of two-wheelers, cars and trucks and, 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 and trains are running in India. And so the markets for cast metal matrix composites is very large, uh, very large in India. We had done a study for global markets and that was over $2 billion a year. But even in India, the markets are very large. I'm going to skip over. There are some research imperatives. Uh, in the area of uh, metal matrix composites, including preventing agglomeration, reducing the cost of composites, uh, overcoming the difficulty in machining, developing property databases to design components, developing a supplier base and capability. This is the biggest problem and I hope in India, the foundries develop a supplier base to supply. If a car company wants metal matrix composite castings, they, they need a supplier base in India. And therefore, as I said, that there are some research imperatives, but despite these imperatives, as I showed you earlier, 
World over composites are being manufactured and they are being used to save energy and to reduce pollution and it's high time that this is now practiced in India. Uh, scientific issues, uh, those people who still want to do research, there are many scientific challenges in casting metal matrix composites like transfer of reinforce in the melt, movement of reinforcements in the melt, effect of reinforcements on viscosity and fluidity, effect of reinforcements on nucleation growth and microsegregation, engulfment of reinforcement by solidifying interface and so on. So these are challenges uh, that people in physics or chemistry or material science or mechanical, mechanical engineering can, can, can apply their minds to. Uh, and I'll stop here, I'll just give you the summary. Uh, basically, in my opinion, uh, there is a great potential for manufacture and use of metal matrix composite castings in foundries in India in view of a strong research base in India and very large markets both in India and abroad. A foundry, foundry produced metal matrix composites will have large markets for scooters, cars, trucks, trains and motorcycles in India, especially in view of the high petroleum based fuels and lubricants and increasing pollution levels in several cities in India. And in India, in India significant amounts of energy can be saved and emission reduced through the use of metal matrix composite castings for brake rotors, cylinder liners, pistons and other components in transport systems in railways, cars, trucks, motorcycles, scooters and aerospace components. And major barriers in the growth of cast MMCs include high cast, lack of design data, difficulty in machining and recycling. In addition to micro composites, recent work has been directed to produce metal matrix composites, syntactic foams, self-lubricating and self heating castings, which will lead to bigger markets as we move into the future. But my basic message is today, today there is right away, there is a large opportunity to produce metal matrix composite castings in Indian, Indian foundries and to use them in Indian engineering industries to reduce energy consumption and to reduce, reduce pollution. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and if you have any questions, Dr. Das or I will be able to answer. Thanks very much for your time.